Texas A&M just spent $75 million to fire Jimbo Fisher, and while he chills in Cancun, somebody has to fix the Aggies football program. Texas A&M could have tried to hire Oregon's Dan Lanning or even chased after Deion Sanders, but instead they settled with me because I've rebuilt more football programs than anybody else. My vast experience will need to be used today because my main goal is to win a championship with the Aggies, but I also have to complete two objectives a season to stay on pace for that, and if I fail even just one of those along the way, I'll be giving away a jersey to a random commenter. The new SEC makes things even even harder, but at least the playoffs are expanded. And my first move is choosing our starting QB. Max Johnson's the highest overall, but he's a senior. And since Connor Wiegman is coming off injury, I want to roll with sophomore Marcel Reed. He only has 73 throw accuracy, but he is much faster than the other guys. And he'll be around for the next three years where I'm going to bring the option run to Texas A&M. The Aggies chose me as their head coach for a reason. And it's been a while since we've used Fang's recruiting mod, but I've decided to put it back in the game. If you've never seen it before, it makes recruiting so much more realistic as players can bust or go up by like 20 overalls. And I'm not kidding about that as you'll see four-star recruits become a 50 overall. So far, the best prospect I've been able to find is Daniel Matthews. And right now he's the only player I can go after to sign an 85 plus recruit. As I scout more players though, I'm sure that we're gonna find some other targets. And we need talent since we're not starting this season in the top 25. In fact, of the eight teams in our division, we're projected to finish near the bottom. And I can only play three games a year, so I'm gonna sim against Alabama, but we're gonna lose by 17. Getting to eight wins this season could be more challenging than I ever imagined, but we do beat Auburn, and that's very needed since we're seeming to fall farther and farther behind on our top three recruits. Luckily, after some failed attempts, I did find a 92 overall kicker that we can go after who's interested in us, and that's a team need that we have to fill, so we might as well schedule him for a visit against LSU, and after maxing out my royal treatment ability, I think this rivalry game is a good one to hop into. I also have to remember that we have Evan Stewart at wide receiver, so if the run doesn't work, we can feed him the ball, but approaching the end of the first quarter, we're already down 10-0, so I haven't been too impressed with Marcel Reed so far, but at least we are about to score. I'm sure they're expecting us to run since that's all we've done, but instead we're going to throw out Devin Stewart. And at one point he was a projected first round pick, but you cannot drop passes like this. That is very disappointing, but we're going back to the run and it's going to work out. And with about 30 seconds left in the half, we have an opportunity to take the lead if we can score a touchdown on this drive. But senior Amari Daniels got tackled short of the first down marker, so we went for it on fourth down and that goes for six. We even had a kick return for a touchdown to start the third quarter, so things are looking on the ups. And one of the beautiful things about our offense is once we get up, we can burn through a ton of clock. I wasn't expecting this throw to go for a first down though. That was right on the money. And Marcel Reed is more than just a runner. It seems like we're about to be the top 25 team. And that's a big deal since everybody's on a visit for this week and we're playing our rivals, but they are stopping the run here. So we might get held to a field goal, which would keep it within two possessions. But Marcel Reed wants to do otherwise. Third and short. Now we're going with the power toss to Ruben Owens, who takes it in easily. And without Jaden Daniels, the LSU offense has struggled so much against us. They're not even trying to come back with a minute and a half left. And Texas A&M fans already love me. This result should get a lot of those visiting recruits to commit. And we might not have landed Corey Fitton, but besides him, there's everybody that we needed. And that includes Connor Donaldson, who as a 92 overall kicker helps us complete this first objective. And it's nice to be ranked in the AP poll again, but we still have a long first season ahead of us. And thank goodness we beat Bowling Green. Also, while scouting more players, I found a gym in plus 19 overall Brian Carter. And right now, nobody has a massive lead on us. So this could be a chance for us to get our quarterback of the future. Obviously, we do have Marcel Reed for a couple more years, but after that, there's nobody. And even though he played pretty well against Arkansas doing it all for us, we still lost, so we're 3-2. and two. And going into the second half of the season, these are all of the prospects that I'm going to focus on landing. Now, we have to choose one of the Mississippi schools to play against, and I think it's best to go against a ranked opponent. So we've simmed to our matchup against Ole Miss, which if we win, could get us back into the conference race. And so far, I feel like I'm doing better than Jimbo Fisher was. But to make sure that's set in stone, we have to get a win. From the looks of it, it looks like they are going to be the first team on the board, but I would have loved to not give up seven. And ever since then, I feel like we've been playing catch up where that throw was off target. I thought we'd play better in the rain, but we have been forced to pass the ball a ton and thankfully we're holding on there. So we're not out of it yet because it's only midway through the third quarter and Ole Miss is being aggressive going for it on fourth and one here. We had it on Jackson Dart. They're going to slip off the tackle though. We missed number one and he's going to be able to take this to the crib with nobody coming close to catching him. We literally had them stop, but now that we're behind by two positions, sessions. We're in a bit more of trouble. We need this third down. And I guess we'll see what happens on fourth and three as it is not going to get open to Anthony, but he makes a guy miss. Thank goodness. It's possible for us to still win this game, but we will need to score a little bit quicker than we have been. And I see Evan Stewart open on the slam. The real issue now is stopping Ole Miss and on third and one Jackson Dart tried to pass, but we were ready for it. And now we just need to drive it all the way down the field, but they are sending in a lot of pressure. Marcel Reed probably should have just thrown that away, but he got panicked. And now we're trying to beat them over the top. He put the throw 
throw right to Cottrell and we're going to the 30. I'm sure that Marcel Reed doesn't like that I'm recruiting a quarterback right now and he seems to be trying to do his best to keep his job as he's going to find Evan Stewart for another first. If we're able to reach the end zone, I think it's best if we go for the two point conversion, but we can't get it out. And that's happened so many times on this drive with a bad throw following it. Fourth and 17 now, and they have put in a lot of pressure on Marcel Reed. He had no choice but to roll out. He's going for the first himself and he doesn't get it. He came really close, but in the end, he was short. And maybe if we could have won, Praise Plummer would have committed to us instead of Michigan. At this point, the SEC championship is definitely out of reach. And with this upcoming schedule, eight wins could be as well, but at least we beat Nevada. Against Notre Dame, I'm expecting us to lose on the road. And Texas is ranked number one, so I'm surprised it was that close. But I'm no longer doing any better than Jimbo Fisher did. So I'm glad that at least for now, we're still number one on Brian Carter's list. But the following week, Oregon was able to pull Daniel Matthews. And all hope seems to be lost going into our game at Oklahoma, but we won by 24. I'm not complaining because eight plus wins is still possible, but that result caught me off guard and has shifted everything for this program. 86 overall quarterback Brian Carter just committed, and even with five losses, we're a top 25 team. We just need to end the year winning at Missouri, and it's been a rough first half, but if we can pick up this fourth and in inches, we could still score on this drive, and look at Daniels go. The 5'9 running back is a senior, which is very unfortunate, but he's got us back on pace to stay in it against Missouri, and now we're getting a defensive stop. From that moment, we scored two touchdowns while Missouri had a lot of field goals, so with a few minutes remaining, we have the ball up by two points and we need a first. They can still force a three and out and get a win, but they have struggled to stop Marcel Reed when it comes to running the ball today, and that's going to go for at least 10. It all comes down to this, where we are going with the triple option and just handing it off. Amari Daniels gets the first down, and we're up to seven wins this year, but we're going to also need to win our bowl game. It's against BYU, so we shouldn't struggle, and I'm hoping sometime in the near future we can participate in the college football playoffs. But to get us there, Marcel Reed will need to complete more of his passes, and he wasn't a great runner, so it's a good thing that Amari Daniels was. If Evan Stewart doesn't go on early to the draft, I think we're going to pass it more, but I'm fully expecting him to leave, and let's try to finish year one with eight wins. For our team, this game's been much higher scoring than what we're usually in as BYU's about to go up, and defense has been almost non-existent for both teams, but that's led to Evan Stewart playing well, and with only two minutes remaining, this should probably be the last drive of the game. We could either tie it up and go to overtime or win, depending on the outcome of it, and I'm going to pitch it here to Anthony for an extra few, but now we need this third and two and Marcel Reed keeps it while fighting for the first down. Just two more yards and that will get us the win. Come on Daniels. And it didn't seem like it was going to be possible especially after we lost like two or three in a row but we are going to finish with eight wins as long as we intercept or knock this ball down. So I've completed both of our season one objectives and Marcel Reed is only a sophomore still. I think the future with him is going to be bright and we're so lucky that all four of the juniors on this team that could have declared for the NFL draft ended up staying. Getting these two prospects is our final priority for season one and I'm very very happy with how this class turned out because it finished in the top three with so many players in it that could make a big difference for us in a few years. Hopefully everybody has a good offseason with progression and junior Bobby Taylor made a massive jump going up eight overalls but Marcel Reed only went up to an 86 so we have three different quarterbacks that could all be a very good starter. Obviously at least for now we're gonna stick with Marcel Reed but if he struggles with this schedule that will be subject to change and he might since the SEC is listed as the toughest conference. Now one thing that's been different about recruiting this season so far is I've found multiple gyms that are very high overalls, and that's huge since one of our challenges is sign an 88 plus recruit, but we aren't in the lead for any of these guys, and we really don't need another quarterback. I'm just going to keep scouting to see if we can find some better fits, and I didn't think our projection would be this high, but we could make the playoffs this year. There's only a few teams in the SEC that are projected to be even better than us, so we should get our first win of the season against Utah State, and on the road at Auburn shouldn't give us too many issues either, and that's what I thought. We don't have many great options for a good visit week so I'm just going to get it out of the way against UTSA. But before that happens, we have to face off against our rivals, LSU. And this year, their offense seems to be a bit more alive as they've already moved it down the field, but they drop it. So instead of getting a touchdown here, they're going to have to kick a field goal. And they'd hold on to that lead throughout the entire game. They're still up by three here in the third quarter. But if we can get a stop on third and eight here, not all hope will be lost yet, except Robinson got burnt by Aaron Anderson. And the Tigers are about to go up by 10 points. Marcel Reed hasn't necessarily made any mistakes, but he also has struggled a lot this game. And he's not getting the first down along with fumbling the ball away. So there's his first actual mistake. And losing this wouldn't ruin our season, but it's something I'd still like to avoid. Since we're holding them to a field goal, we're only going to be down by 13. And with this much time left, it is far from over. Once this slant gets open, I'm going to float it over there, but that ball is severely underthrown into an interception. Of course, LSU gets away with that one as well. And I'm starting to think that we just weren't meant to win this game. It's disappointing, but it's not the end of the world. And against UTSA during our visit week, we destroyed them. So the commits are going to start flooding in and we got a 90 overall. Outside
outside linebacker O Survivor Studley Giles is that player. And we've already signed an 88 plus recruit, but now we have to keep on winning and I'm gonna sim it up to the Notre Dame game. We've had back-to-back -back offensive dominations and then we put up 29, so we should do well against Ole Miss too and we are scoring so much. It's no surprise that people keep wanting to commit here and early on I didn't care too much about getting Earl Melton, but then I saw that he had 98 throw power, so we're gonna pursue him to try and make this QB room even better. I don't know why Brian Carter has a plus one boost since he's only played 10 snaps, but our success has elevated everybody's level of play on our team, and beating Notre Dame would give us a good shot at the playoffs. The only issue is it's on the road, so I'm afraid that we might struggle, and on third and eight, they had the halfback angle route, but I usered it, so we're gonna get the sack instead, and it'll probably be three to three to end the first quarter. One thing we switched up is we are trying to pass the ball more this season, and it has worked pretty well for us because Marcel Reed is a good quarterback. He's gonna evade the pressure here to get the block. He has more time now finding Evan Stewart for a big first down, and what a play. We are not gonna have a shortage of quarterbacks in this rebuild, and that was a tight throw, but the Notre Dame defender never turned around, and going into the half, we're still up by four, but Notre Dame began the third quarter with a touchdown, so now it's on us to respond back. I haven't tried throwing up many 50-50 balls in this rebuild so far, but I know Thomas is a tall receiver, and I'm one for one so far, but he didn't even have to moss this corner. He just ran straight by them, and then we held Notre Dame to a field goal, but after scoring a touchdown ourselves, they have the ball again, and if they don't pick up this fourth and 15, it's all over, which there's no way that he makes it there. This is such a big out-of-conference win for us because at this point, there's not much they can do to come back. And even if we don't pick up this third and four, we're still in field goal range, but Owens is gonna get it plus a lot more. So the Irish's mascot is very sad. And I think we're already seven and one. That's good enough to make us the number three team in the country. And what is NC State doing up here? I doubt that'll last for long, but we should take down my favorite team, Kentucky. And with three games left in the year, we're on pace to make the conference championship while also still being in a battle for five-star quarterback Earl Melton. If Texas was having a better year, I would make this the third game I jump into, but we should be able to win in Sam, and you're kidding. Both of us had almost 500 total yards of offense, but just one result almost dropped us out of the top 10, and our matchup versus Oklahoma is very important. It's weird that they're not ranked since they only have two losses, and I know that we're gonna need to bring our best game, because they're going into this one underrated, so it's not surprising that they're about to score the first touchdown, but it looks like it's our turn to have a good drive, and Le'Veon Moss is gonna finish it off. Considering against Texas, we both almost had 500 yards of offense, this one might go back and forth as well, so getting them off the field could be a massive deal, and on fourth and three, we are gonna stop Jackson Arnold. Somebody just hit him down. Are you kidding me? How did he get the first? Stuff like that is how we find ourselves down by 14 here in the third quarter, but we get the interception, and that is what we need to turn things around. We've been trying to make a comeback from that point, but I'm afraid that it's a little bit too late, because even though we just got it within three, there's only two minutes left, and all Oklahoma's gonna need is one or two first downs, but we're gonna get the interception with Robinson, and that was a weird camera angle. We can actually take down the Sooners now. I'm gonna have to roll around with Marcel Reed, and I was hoping to make a play on the corner route, but he couldn't get the throw out, so it's now third and 10, and I know the drag was open, but because it was a bad throw from him, we are stuck on a fourth and 16, where the seam up the middle has to be open. Come on. Jordan Anthony did everything in his power to not drop this ball, and I feel like we should start to take our time before we score on Oklahoma, but now we find ourselves in a third down situation where our tight end gets open on the drag, and that needs to be a first down. It's gonna come down to the end, and I thought 13 was gonna be on a comeback route. Now I need to look for something else, and we have fumbled it away. Thankfully, we pick it up, but this is starting to look more and more like one where we're gonna just have to take our field goal and go to overtime, but maybe not. If we get close enough to where it's a fourth and manageable, I am gonna go for it, and our slant was open, but it's probably best that we just take our three, and that is a psych. I knew I wanted to go for the fake field goal, and that is knocked away. Looking back, this is a bad play call, but it has worked for us in previous videos, and I just realized that that might have ruined our playoff hopes. I wanted to beat Oklahoma in an embarrassing fashion, but instead we're not gonna win our division in the SEC, and what a terrible ending to the year. I'm just gonna go to the conference championship. It might be a long shot, but there's still a chance that we make the playoffs, so I'm just hoping for the best in conference championship week, and in the end, we fall just short because of our lost Oklahoma. Now Earl Melton wants nothing to do with us, but we have Marcel Reed, and hopefully he returns for his senior year. Once again, he didn't have the most rushing yards, but he did have 10 touchdowns on the ground, and Evan Stewart got fed the ball a little bit more. One of these years, you'll see us in the 12-team playoff, but for now, we're playing in the Liberty Bowl again, and we need to make sure that we go out and beat Colorado to get to 10 wins, but that's an interception. Somehow, though, if we can stop them on third and goal here, we're not going to be trailing, and that's because the rest of the first half went really well for us. After taking a clipping penalty, though, we have it on our own nine, and we should probably take it to the half, but I wanted to find Anthony over the top of the defense because I knew he was quick, and he is just going to toast 31 to take this one to the crib. What an amazing way to end the second quarter, and Jordan Anthony was single-handedly the reason we'd win in the end. It was a very boring second half, but with our 10th win, we've completed both of our season two objectives, and this next year, we need to participate in the playoffs. It's kind of embarrassing,
guessing that with this much talent, we didn't make it this past season. But most of our players that went on to the NFL didn't get drafted that high. And all three of these guys that want to transfer in are terrible, so I'm declining them. I'm bummed out that we can't go after Earl Melton, but at least we should get Matt Davison. And this class is so much better than the one that we put together last year. So it's no surprise that it's sitting up here at the number one spot. Going into training results, Brian Carter is somehow our best quarterback, and I don't know why since he only threw 12 passes, but he might progress more than anybody else. So we're about to check out our training results, and it's no surprise he's up here at the number one spot. I feel bad for Marcel Reed, but I think he's going to lose his starting role. And with Brian Carter as our new QB1, we're going to change our offense, because with only 61 speed, he's much better suited to have a lethal passing attack, and hopefully we can achieve our two season objectives in year three. We're starting the season inside the top 10, so I expect us to make the playoffs, but we have to win on the field because off the field, this recruiting class might not be that good. Our first game against Auburn is a ranked one, so I think we should test out our new offense, and the fans are ready to see what Brian Carter can do. I figured it would have taken another season for him to be the starter, but that is not the case. Now we're going to have to get some pressure in on the quarterback, and that's a massive hit, which is going to force a fumble. We've prevented the Tigers from reaching the end zone early on, and 20 looks weird on a quarterback. He is already going over the top to Cottrell, who breaks free from that tackle. He missed it, and that's going to the house. I cannot believe that is how Brian Carter has begun his career, but he's going back to Raymond. And if we can sling it like this all season, it should be an amazing year. I don't think he's very quick, but he was able to roll out. And Texas A&M might finally be back. We look like we're really solid, and this needs to be an interception, which it is. So I figured that we'd probably run away with this one, but here in the fourth quarter, we're only up by three. And I feel like we need to go for it on fourth and inches, but that might have been the wrong decision. Auburn was able to just make the stop in time, and if they reach the end zone on us, they're going to be able to take a lead. Third and 10 now, where they have a couple slants going over the middle, and we couldn't guard them all. That's going to the three. And of course, it resulted in them punching it in, so we need to have a good drive here, and we are already fumbling it away. Abin picks it up, but it was his fault in the first place because he just missed his block on 52. I'm not happy that we're in this position, but I see Anthony is wide open on the right side of the field, and we have somebody like Brian Carter for a reason, but our offensive line can't block, so we find ourselves in another third and long where they're not going with the man coverage, and I just had to take the check down instead. It all comes down to this fourth and 10, and we are going to go up the seam to Gene, but it's knocked away. So year three is beginning with a loss to Auburn. And if we can't beat LSU, it's going to all go downhill from here, but we're going to put up 42 on them. And Brian Carter is playing almost perfectly. Due to that, these recruits should want to see him in week four against Arizona State. And it's not going to take us very long to recover our ranking, but we have to make sure that we continue to take care of business. And we definitely did there. That led to a lot of the main recruits that I wanted to commit coming to our school. And athlete Kenny Sanders is a two-way player. The only guy I'm bummed out that we haven't gotten yet is outside linebacker Jaron Davis. And this battle will probably go on all year, so we're going to advance a few weeks into the future and we beat Arkansas. Against Mississippi State, I'm expecting the same and that's what happens. So five games into the season, we're somehow on top of our division again, and we're ranked higher than we were to start the year, with a schedule that doesn't have too many more tough matchups on it. Brian Carter's also leading the country in passing yards, but as of right now, he's not on the Heisman watch list, so hopefully he tears it up against Ole Miss on the road, and he didn't do enough. Never mind, it was our defense that was the issue, and it's hard to believe that they performed that poorly, but we're going to go to the Texas one. And I don't know how UTEP's keeping it close with us, but at least we also beat Kentucky. That makes us the 11th best team in the country. And with Missouri losing, there's a five-way tie for a spot in the SEC championship. So we're definitely playing against Texas. But I also want to note that we were able to get Jaron Davis to commit. This game is going to be so tough, but it's our chance to shine in the Lone Star Showdown. And we got the ball first, so I want to score on this first possession, which is looking likely. Brian Carter's young, so he can't tell which receiver is which, but he can still find Cottrell for six. And Malik Murphy is still at Texas, so that is who we're facing up against today. Sarkeesian's being very aggressive to go for it on fourth and four this early on, but it was the right choice. And it seems like we're just going to trade touchdowns back and forth with the Longhorns. I think I'm cool with that because our offense is really good as we continue to pick up first downs, but our defense has struggled for us this year, and I think that's a cause of concern. Approaching halftime, it is all tied up at 21 still, and I'm going to try to go deep just to get us in field goal range. Cottrell's not going to come down with it though, so we need something on this third and 10, and I'm not sure why I went so far down the field on that last one, but Anthony is going to make the defender miss. He has juked him out of his socks, and he's to the five. Texas is ready for the fake field goal attempt. They just shifted everybody back to stop it, but they still couldn't, and that's exactly how you end a first half. We did everything that we could offensively, and I hope that remains true here in the third quarter, but I can tell this play is not going to go anywhere. We really need to get some better block angles because 93 just slipped through two of our players, and if we can't win this game, we're probably not going to make the playoffs, so our guys need to step it up, and on third and three, we do that. I've been very disappointed with our defense, but they came up very clutch for us on that play, and I should have taken the tight end up the middle early on, but luckily they dropped the interception, so we've been gifted another opportunity to reach the end zone, and 
and nobody's beating the man coverage. I have to give credit to the Longhorns defense, but we've already done one fake field goal, so what's another gotta hurt? We're gonna throw it off our back foot, and I cannot believe that this didn't result in a touchdown for us. I clearly haven't learned my lesson from the Oklahoma game last season, but we have them on a third down where we are gonna make a tackle, and if we can, this drive is going to go as slow as possible, because I wanna milk as much clock as I can before the Texas offense gets the ball back on us. It seems like it's working, now we need to pick up this third and three to Nick Ablin, who doesn't get it, and the sophomore could have tried a little bit harder, but we recruited a good kicker for a reason. Now it's all on our defense to seal our win against the Longhorns, we just need to stop Malik Murphy for a couple more plays, and he has so much time back there, which leads to a first down that's dropped, and now that it's fourth and 20, they're gonna need to pick up a lot, but that's not happening. The rain has helped us seal a win that we definitely needed, and it feels good to beat Texas, so our team chemistry should be at an all-time high, but even though we're having success on the field, we're still losing recruits to Florida. All that matters, though, is that we make the playoffs, and there's simply no reason that Southern Miss would ever beat us, so going into our matchup against Oklahoma, the stakes are very high, and after what happened last season, we need to get revenge. The only issue is it's on the road, and the Sooners have moved it down the field very quickly on us, so our offense is gonna have to keep up with them, and I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to. It's third and 11, Gene will knock it out of there, and this is simply setting up to be a disaster. Well, it's no surprise we're trailing with three minutes left, but we're not out of it just yet, as we still have all three of our timeouts and the ball, that's gonna be 20. So as long as our offensive line gives enough time to Brian Carter, we should be okay, and that was a deep bomb that won't get caught. It wasn't perfectly on target, but there was no effort to lay out for it, and I expected more out of senior Jordan Anthony, but he has made up for it already. I've gone his way for three straight first downs, and now we're gonna score a touchdown with him. So Brian Carter has set a school record breaking Johnny Manziel's, and with all three of our timeouts, we could get the ball back, but Jackson Arnold is already breaking a tackle, and don't tell me he's gonna take this one to the crib. It would almost be better if we did, and we're gonna let him get in. I was able to save all three of our timeouts, but we're right back to where we were a minute ago. So that is unfortunate, but Carter's gonna break the sack, and there's a little bit more time back there in the pocket. I'm surprised he was able to avoid it. I think our running back triangle is gonna get open here, and I floated it to him, but that safety stayed on it, and it's intercepted. We're gonna lose to Oklahoma again, so it's gonna be impossible for us to win our conference, but that loss hasn't dropped us outside the top 12, so if we beat Missouri, we should be a playoff lock, and that is what's gonna happen. Also, even though our defense has been terrible, we have multiple award finalists on that side of the ball, and that includes freshman Matt Davison. It ended up being a very close call, but we have made the college football playoffs, and Malik Cilia actually won the Nagurski, so I have completed both of our season three objectives, and Brian Carter led the country in passing yards, racking up 44 touchdowns with only nine interceptions, but apparently that wasn't enough to make him top five in Heisman votes, and Raymond Cottrell, Jordan Anthony, and Michael Tease put in all that work for nothing. As for our rushing attack, it was pretty weak with sophomore Nick Abilene leading the way, but all that matters is that we've gotten to this point, and if we beat USC, we'll have another shot at Oklahoma, but I have a feeling that it's gonna be hard to get through this one, and I don't know when the Trojans decided to start recruiting defense, but I'm not a fan of it. On his first drive, Brian Carter struggled, but approaching the end of the first quarter, we'd end up getting a field goal. USC is trying to get their first points, and they're gonna get held to three. So it's been a low-scoring outing so far, which means it's a great time to try and mix in a deep shot if it gets open, but instead we're gonna take our underneath route, and I can't believe Brian Carter's been better than Johnny Manziel. He's breaking all of his records, and now that we're in the Trojans' red zone, we're threatening to score with this ball taking us all the way to the one. I don't know why we're getting a little tricky on the goal line, but it's gonna work out. And our defense has really showed up here against the Trojans as we are close to halftime and the freshman's gonna get the pick. The second I saw that ball floating, I knew he was gonna have a chance at it and we're gonna try to bomb him on the final play just to see what happens and it's gonna be caught, but Tease won't get away. So even though we weren't able to score, that should pump up our confidence even more. And I hope that we continue to have success here in the second half. They're not gonna have anybody open until late for the first down. And if any part of our defense is good, it's our defensive line. So we need to make sure that we're generating pressure on this third and goal, and I don't think we're going to as they have a touchdown. Points have been so hard to come by, and their defense just rotated on me, which really confused me. So to end the third quarter, we're gonna find ourselves going down by at least three points, and if it wasn't for that tackle, it could have been worse. This is the opposite of how I thought this would go, but now we find ourselves in a third and two, and if they're not gonna have anybody on Nick Abilene while running man coverage, we're just gonna go to him and let him get us to about midfield. That would eventually lead to this third and 13, where I should have taken it up the seam a bit sooner, now we're just gonna have to run away from it. And out of frustration, I've hurried it up, but we should probably take a timeout and simply settle for three since we finally got back in that position. The issue we're running into now is USC has driven it down the field on us, and I'm not sure if we can get them back off of it because they're chewing clock now and running the ball, so we need to make a tackle on Nelson, but I almost feel like I made a mistake. If I let them get into the end zone, we still have a chance to tie it up, and we've only been left with 33 seconds, but as long as we have a chance, I'm gonna be happy, and Harley just juked out two players. Does he have the speed to get around the edge? No, he does not. It was still 
still a very solid return, but we need about 60 yards to get down the field, and we only have one timeout remaining. We got to lateral this to pick up the first down. That was such a great move. I knew that we could not afford to get tackled in bounds here, so I'm glad that it paid off. And out of hurry up mode, we're going to go with another deep pass play. This one going over to T's, but they're going to get the interception. To be honest, looking back on it, everything on this play was completely boxed up, and we had to go somewhere with it, but unfortunately, it's going to cause us to lose. Knowing it was to the eventual winners of it all, though, makes me feel better, because it shows that we had a very competitive team. So even though we're losing so many studs to the NFL or graduation, I'd like to think that next year we're going to have even more success, and I feel like our season four objectives aren't that out of reach. Throughout this entire rebuild, we've had some very highly ranked classes, so I'd like to think that that will pay off in the near future, and I want to make sure that our pass rush stays very good, so I'm moving All-American right outside linebacker Damian Sanford over to left end. Once training results come in, this defensive line might be even better than the one we had last year, and defensive tackle DJ Hicks might have not improved at all, but I think it's going to be okay. After a pretty easy first two games, things are going to get tough very quickly, but when you play in the best conference, that's what happens, and we only have a few team needs at tight end, free safety, and punter. However, this recruiting class isn't looking very good with Johnny Oliver being the highest player, so I'd rather just focus on how Brian Carter performs as a junior. Going into the year, he is a very solid team around and projected to finish 7th, but to be honest, I think we'll overachieve that because we're a 99 overall, and we also have a 99 overall quarterback, so we should be able to dominate a lot of these teams. This is exactly what I'm going to expect out of our offense, and that one Brian Carter player of the week. We should be going into the Bama game 2-0, but that was much closer than I thought it would be, and hopefully we come out on top of this top 5 matchup. I think this is the first time we've played Alabama in this video, so I'd like to set the standard of us beating them, and I am trusting our front 3 to get pressure, but they go with the halfback screen and we're all over it. There's Brian Carter trotting out onto the field, and it's been a pretty long drive, but hopefully it results in a touchdown. I don't know why I'm trying to run with him. He's not a scrambler. Of course he fumbles it, and they're going to pounce on top of it. I'm so used to quarterbacks that are able to run, but I have to get used to using a pocket passer, and we're going to bump him into a big hit stick. The last time I played with this team, we only put up 13 on USC, and now we have to do something better against the Crimson Tide. I'm going to be able to find Harley over the middle of the field, and he is fighting for even more. There's three minutes left in the first half, and nobody's scored yet, so that's why I was getting worried. But Brian Carter is 7 for 7, and on this corner route, that should be 8 for 8. But the Alabama cornerbacks are going to make it a little bit harder for us to score than I was expecting, and I just tried to scramble again. I've also learned my lesson to not run fake field goals, and it's a beautiful thing to have a defense out there that can actually get stops. It's much improved from last season. This should be an interception, but it was dropped. And approaching halftime, I would love to finally reach the end zone if we have enough time and it's intercepted instead. If Cottrell wouldn't have stopped running his route, that probably would have turned into a touchdown. So I'm just glad that we ended up getting one in the third quarter, but Alabama still hasn't until this play. It stayed a tight matchup down to the final minutes, but all we're going to need is a few first downs to win the game. And I'm hoping the counter to the left side of the field works as Abilene is going to get the first plus more. He improved so much this offseason, but unless he picks up this third and 11, it's not over, and he does. I didn't think he would be the player that would ice the game for us, but we have survived against Alabama, and our schedule doesn't get any easier. Now we have to host number five LSU at home, and early on, they've gone up 14 to zero, so we have a lot of work to do the rest of the game, and I'm just throwing up a prayer, which is gonna result in a drop from Gene. That's not how you wanna end the first quarter, but surely at some point, our offense has to get something going, and Harley might might be the one that does it. He has 98 speed, making him our fastest wide receiver, but I don't see anybody getting open here. And this Tigers defense is no joke, but I'm going to try to beat it up the seam, and that's a catch. The refs didn't review it either, but LSU has moved it down the field again. So after forcing a huge sack, I would absolutely love to get the Tigers off of the field, and that's exactly what we just did. Now, nobody really presses us. They're very smart knowing we have speed at wide receiver, but I'm still going to try to go over there to Tommy Jeem, and he ran right by number 29. So we have scored a touchdown, and things seem to be on the ups for us if we can get them off of the field on third and six, which is what we just did. I'm gonna do another deep shot just because we can. I think we have the size mismatch here with Cottrell and he comes down with it, or at least the game made it seem that way, but apparently this ball slipped out of his hands. That's very disappointing, but we did get the ball first to start the third quarter and I would love to get this third and six, but we're not gonna. So it's time to be smart, settle for a field goal and go up by three. It hasn't seemed like much to me, but we have scored 17 straight on the Tigers and we get an interception. So everything is starting to swing in our direction and there's no way that Harley doesn't come away with his football. I thought that route would break much different than it did, but what just happened with this play? It was supposed to be a play action into a pass, but instead we just started running backwards and it's not going to matter anyway. So Tommy Jean is having himself a game and LSU just can't get it figured out offensively as this should be another third down stop. Come on, make the tackle boys. That would lead to a touchdown from them. So we are only up by three, but we're going to get this one out to Nick and he's going to fight for the first. So I'm starting to realize that we could burn through a lot of clock as there's only a few minutes remaining.
remaining and how did he get out of there? He's only touched the ball seven times today, but now we're going to lean on him or the backup. And Ballman is in for a second straight carry, but he's also doing a fantastic job. I'm even going to mix in a read option with our 63 speed quarterback and he is going to get a few. But we're never letting that happen again as he got destroyed and we just need two yards to seal it. We're going with the pass out to Abilene and he doesn't get there. Big field goals have burned us in the past, but I don't think LSU is going to expect it and that will be the game. Don't go into the end zone. We're just going to run out the clock. And trust me, I'm not going to pull a Miami. We just got two top five wins in a row and the quality of recruits we're landing isn't as good, but we don't need it. Right now, we are ranked as the number one team in the country and I could look back to regret this, but I'm going to sim like five or six weeks into the future. I'm only able to hop into one more regular season game, so I don't have a choice. And as much as I'd like to be Ole Miss now, I think some of those other games could mean more in the future. We got that result too though, so all is looking well until we lose to South Carolina. And if SMU and the ACC beats us, I would be upset. They're in a better spot now, but Oklahoma on the road is going to be a win for us. And I'd say all is still well since we are a top four team. We're also going to make the SEC championship, assuming we beat Texas. And since it's one of our season objectives, this is important. It's at DKR, which makes it even more difficult. But the Longhorns have already lost four games this season. They're not as good. And I have a lot of time back here in the pocket where we're not going to catch it. I can't expect us to, but I am surprised that nobody was able to get open. And with a couple minutes left in the first half, we are down by 11, but that's not going to last for very long. We didn't get the two point conversion after though. So we're down by five and we have got to hold them from the first down marker, which is what we did. And they're only going up by a possession. It's not the end of the world, but I'm not happy that we're down. And after getting a field goal in the third quarter, it is an 11 point game. So we have got to start scoring. There's something about Texas A&M or something. Maybe it's a curse where they just can't be the best team. And I've been trying to change that all video, but it hasn't happened yet. But I do see Cottrell open and that gives us the lead. We needed that so bad. And we have been forcing sacks, putting them in a third and 27 situation where they are not going to pick it up. And just like the other two games that I hopped into this year, I think we're going to just run out the clock to get the win. If we have a good return here, that would be even nicer. I know Harley has like 98 speed, so he's going to get to the outer edge. And this will go all the way to the 30, the 20. Come on, keep on going. And now we'll use Nick Ablin, who we haven't all game, but he plays his role at the end. We played so bad for so long, but now it seems like we're in control. We just got a score touchdown. And I'm hoping this motion throws off the defense, which it does. I mean, Texas would score after that, but they'd also need the onside kick, which they're not able to recover. So we've gone into DKR and beaten the Longhorns, which guarantees that we make the SEC championship. And that knocks off our first of our two season four objectives. This result against Missouri doesn't affect that, but it could affect our ranking. So we destroyed them. And I can't believe that Brian Carter isn't in the Heisman race again. He has way more passing yards than anybody in the country. And he's the quarterback for the number one team in the country. But this SEC championship should be good. We're facing off against the number two team in the country. But depending on the poll you look at, some of them have them at three. Anyway, they might have scored first, but we're going to get the first touchdown. And Brian Carter's just breaking his own records. On third and eight, I'm trusting our defense to get Georgia off of the field. And I don't think anything's open. They're going with the deep shot. This should be intercepted. There we go with Hughes. And hopefully that's the first of many turnovers to come. To be honest, it's a year earlier than I ever expected, but we could win a championship. And that would be pretty crazy if we pulled it off. Down here on the goal line, though, we need to focus on scoring on Georgia. And Carter had speed, but not enough to escape around the pressure. And we're going to take our comeback route, which is intercepted. I should have never mentioned that we could potentially win a championship because now we're not playing as well. But we scored again in the second quarter. So near the end of the half, we're up by two possessions. This one could be a touchdown, though, and we have made the interception. If this ball was put in the right spot, this would not have been the result of it. But we're very lucky that's how it turned out. And I'm going to try to take a deep shot to Harvey. I know he has the speed to run by number eight, but he won't burn him fully. And I just realized that his name is Harley, not Harvey, but I'm still going to go back to him. I've been calling him the wrong name, and that's a touchdown. With that pass, Brian Carter broke another record of his. And our defense held it down all day, so it would be no surprise if we got them off the field again, which we do. I cannot believe we have the backups in in the SEC championship, but that is how well we played. And the entire second half was so boring, but that's better than us having to squeeze out a close one. And Jordan Harley had the best game of his career. Brian Carter also just randomly won the Heisman, but even going into conference championship week, he wasn't on the Heisman watch list. So I'm just glad that he got what he deserved. And of our three stud receivers, Tommy Jean was the best one. We also had our center win the Remington. And of the 12 teams that made the playoff, five of them are from the SEC. This game will decide our first round matchup. And with 10 seconds left, Florida has a one point lead on Penn State, but they could end up blowing it. So they're lucky that the Nittany Lions couldn't get in field goal range because now they have to go for the Hail Mary and that is not going to be caught. Technically, our only other goal for the season is to win a playoff game. So this matchup against the Gators is a big deal and they beat South Carolina while we lost to them. It's not going to be easy to take them down, especially since they already scored on their first drive, but maybe we can do the same with some big
big passes. And we have flown down the field, which is going to lead to a Jordan Harley touchdown. It's very important we get the Gators off on their next drive, though, and we do. And we're about to see how quick their defense is because they came out in a press coverage. I had enough time to get the ball up. And of course, we have to go back to Harley. He is too good to not use him. If this turns into a shootout, they can try to keep up with us, but I think they're going to struggle to do so. And they picked up that last third and five on the ground, but this time I was ready for it, and they still ended up getting it. Maybe the third time's the charm, though. On third and eight, they're not going to run it this time, and they went with a pass where that needed to be picked, but because it wasn't, they're going to get a field goal. And I'm just glad that our offense has felt almost unstoppable, as we should be scoring again. Jordan just got tackled in a weird way, though, so I hope he's okay. And he's out there on this third and goal where he should create enough separation and get the catch, but this was an incredible defensive play. I can't even be upset about it because of how amazing it was, and now their quarterback's going to scramble in. So we're most likely going to end the first half trailing to the Gators and I might as well try to take a shot deep but they are all over that ball. Our Heisman winning quarterback is starting to struggle and that is a big cause of concern. I don't think he's getting this out. So it seems like everything is starting to crumble and I know they're going with the drag but they still scored on it. We need the Gators to actually bite on this play action but I had no time so it's not looking good. And they'd score another touchdown putting us down by 17 so I don't think we can win. It's third and nine and I can't believe that we are in this position but we might as well try to come back. And we have a long way to go, but we could get them off the field on this third and three, which we are going to do. I'm going to lock into the best of my abilities, and if nothing's open deep, we'll just go underneath through our running back, who can still get at least 10 yards. We have kept the chains moving, and now we have to finish this drive with a touchdown. And I probably shouldn't be running in this position since we need the clock on our side, but I think it all works out for us anyway, and we'll see what we're able to do with three timeouts. We cannot let them break a tackle early on, and can Hicks catch number 36? No, he cannot. This one is going to go to the house. You've got got to be kidding me. I knew that Florida wasn't going to be an easy opponent, but I didn't see us losing to them. And so many players are about to graduate or go on to the NFL, so this is set up for trouble. We might not win a championship for another few years, and Texas A&M fans understand, because they've seen stuff like this happen so often. I just need a miracle to go our way, and that's going to be dropped. I don't think it's going to matter that I have some out routes out there, but we are going to get the first down. Cottrell's going to avoid the tackle for more, and at this point, they're refusing to press our wide receivers, so we're just going to have to go underneath for first downs. We cannot risk the clock being stopped because I don't want to burn through our timeouts and I'm going with the deep bomb. Please do not intercept this ball. Catch it. And we had it right there, but we were not able to hold on. Now we're just throwing up a 50-50 ball and it works. That's another record for Brian Carter now. And even though he is the most passing yards ever in a season, I think we're about to be put out and we just need to stop the run. This third and five is everything and we shot him up the middle. So technically we do still have a chance. This punt is going to go to Harley and we know that he has speed. I think the right side of the field could be open if he could get around this edge and we need a couple of blocks. Come on, boys, just get him for me. We have no timeouts and to get in field goal range, I'm not sure we're able to make any mistakes in this game, but Connor Donaldson has 99 kick power and they think that we can make this. It's hard because he's iced and it's from 57, but all I can do is hope that this goes down the middle and it looks like it is. So we have made it to overtime and we could get the Gators off of the field. It is third and 12 and that ball is knocked away. And even though I would have loved the interception, a field goal is still fine. We are in complete control as with just one touchdown, we can win this game. And if this is man-to-man, -man, Harley is going to get open, but it's zoned, so we're going to go underneath the Willie Jean instead. Or Tommy, whatever his name is, it's not important because all I care about is us getting the win, and that is going to be a touchdown. So we have somehow survived against Florida, and that comeback is one that I will never forget. It's hard to believe I have five instant classics that are better than that finish, but I guess I play a lot of NCAA football, and our next opponent is Oregon, who just crushed UCLA with this win. As for our season four objectives, we won a playoff game, so we've completed both of them. But I'm also going to pop up the season five objectives where we've already completed one of them because just in case we win it all, it is possible to complete everything. And I didn't think I could turn around Texas A&M this quickly, but we need to make sure that we don't get too far ahead of ourselves since we are only in the semifinals and do not ask how it is a second and 32, but I don't think we're picking it up. To be honest, our best chance is probably just trying to go over the top to Harley and it actually worked. I cannot believe we bounced back from a sack and a holding call. Making our offense go through him is so clutch and they're not getting this. So we've already gotten them off the field twice and we're about to score another touchdown going up 14. That also gets Jordan Harley in the school record books, but I don't think it's going to be that easy to put out Oregon as they've moved it down the field. And these next three plays could tell us a lot about our defense, but we're only going to get one of them. I was hopeful for a goal line hold, but at the end of the day, it's not a big deal and they are not going to keep up with Cottrell. He just got in between the two safeties over there. And I figured this corner was probably in a cloud. So the second he bit down, I lofted it up and the safety just couldn't get back to the football. We've had a quarterback with 95 throw power and we're just starting to use it. But let me tell you, 
it is a lot of fun, and I learned from the Florida game that we have to get it going early. I don't want Oregon to think they have any chance of beating us, and I'm gonna give Nick Ablin another shot to reach the end zone, this time on the halfback toss. It's not completely over yet, but if we can continue to hold strong, it will be, and they're not picking up that third and eight, so they had no choice but to punt at us, where we have driven down the field, and on this third and 14, Ablin is going to get out of there, and that is gonna result in a touchdown. What a play. I give full credit to our defense for helping us get this result. Oregon just couldn't get it going all day, and that performance was so much better than what we did against Florida. Our championship opponent's gonna be one of these two teams, and Auburn doesn't have much of a chance, but they do have 16 seconds to get it done. I'm very glad that we're gonna avoid playing them, because the SEC schools in this dynasty have been much better than everybody else, and we'll see how good Clemson really is. They came into the playoffs as the second highest seed, so the best two teams made it to the end, and their only loss is to Louisville. Just like us, they dropped one that they probably shouldn't have, but it doesn't matter because we both made it here in the end, and I'd love to get them off the field on this third and six, where I knew the slants were going to get open, but we couldn't get in pressure. So a touchdown is probably inevitable for the Tigers, and if they keep going with these runs, we can shoot the holes. But now on third and eight, I'm assuming that they're going to go with the pass, and I'm using that all day. Please throw me the interception. I'm bad. Wait, the refs might be bailing us out, and this is exactly what we needed. Clemson would only get a field goal instead of seven, and we're still down by three, approaching the end of the half, but we're going to find Gene, which is going to get us past midfield. And everybody's offensive possessions have taken so much time off the clock all day, but nothing's open. And I keep forgetting that we do not have a fast quarterback. We do have one that has a cannon though, and this ball is put right where it needs to be to Cottrell, who's going to go to the house. So we ended the first half the right way, and here in the third quarter, I don't even know what to do. Clemson's been sending blitz after blitz that our offensive line has really struggled to pick up, but we are going to get them off the field. And I was afraid that that might have gotten them in field goal range where they are going to be short. There's definitely a reason that they're not giving us a chance to get off throws like this, but because they did on this play, you know that we have to go to Harley over the top. And on third and five, I knew the halfback screen was probably coming. We have to get over there with Hughes though. And what an amazing defensive play from him. I understand going for it on this fourth and three is not the smartest, but I want to pick it up. And that led to us giving up a touchdown, not even a minute later. So again, it wasn't the brightest decision, but look at Nick go. He is going to spin out of there. And I did not think he would get this many yards. Sometimes I just have to appreciate the offensive players we have on this team because it's a great group of guys. And what a way to end the third quarter. We are so close to going back up by two possessions. And I doubt Clemson is going to run here. They did go with the pass, which is going to be intercepted by Dantzler. Ever since I've recruited him, he has started for us in every single game. And I didn't know Carter could move like that. But I am so proud of this team, especially our defense for making plays. And we are so close to winning it all. I'm just going to make Clemson burn through their timeouts and then kick a field goal to be smart or go with the fake because that is what we do over here. But it turns out that I never learned my lesson and I'm probably going to get away with it too. If Clemson doesn't pick up this fourth and four, it is all over, but they have somebody over the middle and they'd go on to score a touchdown, but on the two point conversion, they're not going to get it. So they need a lot to go their way. And it starts with this onside kick that we are going to recover. I can't believe it only took us four seasons, but I've won a national championship with Texas A&M. And I also complete all 10 challenges I set up for this video. Hopefully my Aggie fans enjoyed this one. And if you want to see some of my other rebuilds, I'd recommend checking out this playlist.